So Dearest Fiona is my third feature. Um, I finished it, uh, it premiered this year at the Berlinale in the Forum, so in February. Uh, it's a film uh, which uh, lasts 102 minutes and it's uh, a film which uh, balances, uh, well I guess between both art and cinema and also documentary and fiction. Um, it's um, made entirely with archival footage uh, from uh, the silent era, uh, filmed in the Netherlands, uh, non-fiction material, so documentary material, uh, and that is combined with uh, a voiceover which forms a narrative of uh, letters um, a father writing to his daughter, and it's actually my father who wrote to me when I just moved to Amsterdam. August 2nd, 1988. Leibster, Fiona. The weekend slipped by before I could put pen to paper. There's nothing really important happening at home except perhaps a talk between Eleanor, Mum and me. I almost forgot that you had written to us in Dutch. Yeah, I can understand that you find the spelling rather difficult. But otherwise, it's not a difficult language, especially as you speak German so well. It is about layering. The film has lots of different layers. And uh, what is unusual about the film and challenging in the beginning for uh, the audience is that uh, the, what you see and what you hear don't match. So uh, the, the images are coming from a much earlier time than uh, the letters are describing. The letters are written in the late 80s. Uh, whereas the material, the film material that you're watching is uh, coming from uh, about 100, 120 years ago. This, this piece came to life in the editing room and um, it, it, it took a long time and it was very, it's very carefully composed, uh, a bit like a choreography, uh, so that there are, um, there are moments when there is quite a clear contact, um, but maybe unexpected. Uh, and um, th these uh, come throughout the film and then as it is quite a sedimentary film uh, slowly but surely uh, the meaning builds up and you start to sort of understand better what you're hearing and also what you're seeing and also how they come together. Um, for this piece, uh, I was given access to uh, the Dutch film archives, uh, which I felt was quite um, a special opportunity and maybe also the last time that they will open their doors so widely to me and just say, here you are, uh, have a look, do what you want with it. And so that felt like a special opportunity. In the beginning, I didn't know what I was looking for, but eventually I decided to concentrate on the material which I've ended up working with. So this um, documentary footage, very, very, very early footage, silent. That's always a thing with when you're working with an archive. At the be in the beginning, it feels very big and it feels very hard to, to get a sense of what they have and what's there and, and what, what can be found. At the same time, there's always this feeling of promise uh, because, you know, you hope that you'll find something special. And so uh, that's probably the reason why I've continued to go back and also 
people ask me now <laughs> to, to look at their archives. The sound is, um, I think, really, really, really important in cinema. I think it's like the forgotten lost brother who always sort of doesn't get mentioned. Um, whereas uh, it, it, it makes or breaks a good film and uh, it's, uh, you can do so much with sound. And so if, particularly for this project, I think there were, there were two things which were really key. One was that uh, we went to great lengths to make sure that all the material has a kind of natural speed. Um, so when you slow down, most of this material has been filmed by hand, so they don't actually know the speed, and sometimes they might go a bit faster and then sometimes a bit slower. Um, it's been scanned about 18 image frames per second, um, but quite often when that gets transferred uh, to 24 or 25 frames per second, then it gets speeded up, and so you get that, that silly kind of Charlie Chaplin sort of feel, feeling of, yeah, this is not real, this is a bit ridiculous. Whereas when you slow it down, and it, it, it sort of gives, it's like you're breathing air into the images and it enables you, I feel, as a viewer to be able to step inside the images and walk in, be there more. And you can do that both with the speed and with sound. So obviously, silent material, I did decide to focus on silent material. There was no sound, so I worked uh, for a long time with uh, the sound designer with whom I've worked with, I've collaborated for all my projects, and uh, Hugo Dykstahl, and he did an enormous amount of work, and an amazing amount of work, to recreate um, the, the sounds of 100 years ago and of what we're seeing. The film is not about uh, making a documentary reality. It's actually more like a dream or um, to an extent, uh, sometimes the people you're looking at, I wanted I, to almost to be like ghosts. Well, interesting um, is hopefully that uh, artists um, uh, uh, can approach uh, a cinema um, with a um, naive and joyous disregard of the rules. We don't understand anything about theatre, we don't understand anything about narrative um, in the beginning, and uh, so we, we break all the rules. And hopefully um, that um, enables cinema to sort of invent itself or reinvent itself or um, push its own book borders and boundaries and, and, and become um, something new and something more exciting. Um, so there's lots of things I could talk about, but <laughs> maybe I should stop. <laughs>